Hi all, I'm really happy to see you in this program and that you have joined today and from so many different places. This means a lot. If you have taken your time off your weekend, it already really shows you that you're a true future hero who takes proactive steps for your future self, right? And that's what's most important, really. So I'm Elvira Zaltan, and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, my journey, my lessons learned from building a product or helping others to build products, and hopefully I'll give something valuable for you today as well, as I have compiled a few stories from my life where it was real experience of learning, uh, of also a bit failing, but trying to learn from those experiences, and then a bit of su succeeding as well in that. And uh, to give you a little a little background of myself and what I've done in the past few years, I will not go into details, but this is a very, very rough overview. I have a diploma in law and diplomacy, and by education, actually, I'm a lawyer who specializes in data protection. And in my experience, I've worked in governmental institutions, NGOs, private companies, so I've got the best of all worlds, but one thing I'm not, I'm not a developer. And in spite of what some may believe, that for you to work in the IT sphere or an IT company, that you would need to know how to program, for me, it wasn't really true. So the experience has been quite colorful, I would say. I put a lot of pictures here, it seems a lot, but it has ranged from hands-on working with product uh, de development and delivering it to clients, from trying to also come up with new ideas to develop, to also public speaking, organizing events. So it's very, very diverse, right? But Let's start from the beginning. And I will start with school years, which might be something more relatable to you and my first steps in entrepreneurship. So I come from a very small city called uh, Palsy in Kurzeme. So I'm the one pin in Kurzeme that there weren't a lot, but hopefully there is in the program in general. Uh, but uh, when I was 16 years old, I decided to move away from my parents from a little, a little small town to start studying in Riga State Gymnasium number three. And there was a program called Commercial Diplomacy. Uh, I had no friends when I moved to Riga, no family, no one really here. It was quite lonely to a new place. They start making friends, right? So I threw myself in every project or organization that I could uh, think of just so I could get to know more people. I was a part of the U.S. Embassy Youth uh, Advisory Council. I applied to Yalnesh Saima. I was going uh, to dancing classes that I haven't put pictures here, like cheerleading being active in youth organizations, volunteer work, different kinds of programs like this one, um, helping to organize different kinds of events. And I was, you know, more going to the political route at that time because I wasn't really sure what to do in my life. And I was in a commercial diplomacy program uh, where we were taught different kinds of subjects uh, such as, uh, you know, public speaking, uh, politics. Uh, there was also this very interesting subject that was uh, called entrepreneurship. Uh, the, the, where we also had to make not ZPD, for example, as there is in many high schools, but we had to build either a student company or you could do a social project, right? And uh, we didn't only do this business presentation, this business plan that we had to make about it, where we describe what we want to do and how we would ex execute it. We decided to actually execute it. And so this is why I said that this is kind of my first large scale project that I ever did. And it was in high school. I was 16 years old, and I um and and this was my first steps in entrepreneurship. It was a social project, really, a charity project. And uh, the pictures are not good because these are screen so screenshots from a video. And if you're interested, I can send you a link. Uh, it's it's very wholesome, I think. And we did a Christmas charity campaign for the elderly in senior homes. We wanted to make them happy during Christmas time, as we knew that sometimes they feel lonely during that time and some might not have families to visit them. So what we did is we actually uh, reached out to sponsors. We reached out to retail shops. One of them was Tops, and they sponsored us candies. They gave us candies for the event. We got our little cards with their fingers, um, youth organizations to help us make the packages. Uh, and um, with the candies, and then we uh, drove and gave to each elderly person of this. We also organized them a concert together with the Christian choir. We uh, did a little kid performances where they danced for them. And there were so many happy tears and heartwarming, heartwarming moments. And to this day, I really think that this has been one of my favorite projects I've done because it did really came purely from heart and like with the attention of giving and how every party and every person and company came together and just, you know, did good for people. And um, yeah, this this was like the first experience of kind of trying to reach out to companies, understanding like how to ask them and getting the courage to asking them to help us to do this. And, you know, uh, 
we did it. And, uh, and, and, and the thing is, we just, you know, we were 16 year old high schoolers who didn't know how to do it or what to do, but we did it. We just asked and, and it happened and we're happy it did. And, uh, but after high school, I did also a bit of time working in law offices. And I also did work in Riga city council as a lawyer for a bit, but not long for uh, this year. I thought to myself, why am I doing so many things over and over again as a lawyer? Isn't there a way I could make these contracts faster? You know, why are there so many clients avoiding lawyers and fearing that we are too expensive? And how can I make our services much cheaper for them? But also, how can I make the working much easier for us? Because there's a lot of work for us and, and a lot of repetitive work. I saw many lawyers being overworked. And so it just made sense for me to try to figure out how can I make this happen? And so, yes, here came my first experience in trying to build an actual company after high school. And I was already, you know, in a, I don't remember if I was in the last year of bachelor's or, for, or first year of master's, but I was quite young. I was still studying in university. And um, yeah, but uh, not long after, I thought to myself, well, why am I doing these things? And uh, decided to uh, create a product out of it. I took my two course mates along with myself uh, by hand, and uh, we thought that we could create a contract generator online. So we thought the contracts generated somehow, somehow we didn't know even how, you know, we didn't have any experience. So we wanted to pro provide the option thought online with the option to also sign them online. So you wouldn't have to, you know, send or go to the person and actually write the signature by your hand and thus reducing the costs for, uh, for the client, but also making it easier for lawyers because they wouldn't do, have to do it by themselves, you know, each time manually. And looking back, there are now many reasons I wouldn't maybe pursue this idea, but at that time, without any experience in building startups, it really seemed great. It's, it really seemed like a great idea. But where do, where do we start, right? We had this idea. None of us had business experience. We were all lawyers, you know? You, how do you even build a tech product like that? Where do you even start? And uh, we just through friends somehow found a developer who who could help us and we put together our little money that we had you know we didn't have like stable jobs as students um and uh, to do a web page for us so we started with a web page just you know the first version first steps in our building of product journey uh, but in the meantime we needed some money to fund our project of course because it did cost so we decided, you know, we're lawyers. Uh, technically, we're lawyers. We have studied uh, data protection. So let's start providing services in data protection. And there was this regulation called GDPR that came out. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware or not, but uh, there was a really big thing. And uh, we thought it's the perfect opportunity. You know, everyone will, you know, come running to us. We will be, I don't know, rich <laughs> and we will be able to build our product. Uh, because everyone will need their uh, pro documentation sorted and we can do that because who doesn't need that right now but we were wrong we were wrong uh, here came the reality check number one really that I sent out uh, my first marketing emails together with my uh, with my peers and just to understand that we knew nothing about presenting our services we knew nothing about marketing and uh, we didn't even know who's our customer let alone what to offer him or her and nothing we did really worked at first. So we realized that we needed to, a bit to learn and read about business education. And so we applied to an incubation program, a LIA incubation program. Uh, we also applied to pre-acceleration program in Startup Wise Guys. There is such a program. And um, we launched our website. Uh, we got the publication. We got our 800 uh, visitors. We got admitted to an acceleration program in Estonia. But there was the reality check number two. No one needed our product. So, and, and we had a product because no one really needed it. We had created something that we liked, but we didn't know if our clients really needed it or, or, or they liked it. So we didn't go to Estonia. We also couldn't afford that. We were, we were students, but you know, we had this passion. We had this passion. We wanted to really build it. So what we did decide, and I have booked some pictures here. You can see that uh, on the... Uh, left side corner upper side where i'm holding the phone it's like the first web page that we made but uh, on the um, right side upper corner where it's just like the ipad you can see the second version of the product that we got to with applying to an accelerator but you know we didn't launch it but uh, we decided since we didn't go to the acceleration program we decided okay let's just learn a bit 
try to sell these services that we have, consult clients, get the firsthand experience, and then try after a year again to apply, right? And then we can go because then we will be, we, we have finished our master's, a university will be off the table. We've actually this time sat down, we talked to our clients, what are they in need with? searching for we packed all that into one package and started targeted sales for our clients you know what it actually worked uh, we are realized that that was not the time to actually like sell them already create documents create documents we, when we went to clients we realized that they don't even know that they need documents it was so new that, that what they actually needed was educating them like doing audits looking through their processes and saying hey you need the document and then only we could go uh, and help them to create the documents. So it was a completely different space than it's now. Now I see, you know, startups already budgeting in their in their expenses that we will need GDPR documentation. But that was a new thing then, and uh, and, and and companies didn't know about that. And how ever would we have known that if if we wouldn't have gone and talked to our clients? So that definitely was the lesson number one: going talking to the clients, seeing where they are at, and creating that they are needed currently for this, their state currently. So yeah, uh, what did we do differently? Of course, we, we defined what we were selling, we researched our customer, like I said, understood where to reach them best, and we delivered something that the customer needed, right? Not what we thought that they needed. And we did reach our goal uh, for us to work full-time here. So it was a good time and the company is actually still alive today. And it's still consulting uh, clients and we had, uh, we have had more than 100 clients, partners, uh, and some publications that we've done. I put some of the most known that you might know in, uh, might know here. Uh, but all in all, this was a really good experience in building my first company that actually had some revenue, you know, and, uh, and, and could sustain us uh, working full time. However, uh, service providing still wasn't my dream and it wasn't still my passion. Ultimately, I wanted a tech product, right? So when we kind of settled down in the consultation, uh, consultation part, uh, my journey continued um, with legally staying in the background and I realized, you know, I still want to learn. I still want to build a tech product. At, at this time, I think uh, we were 23 years old. Uh, we received our first Forbes 30 under 30 recognition and it really gave us kind of a confirmation that our work was being noticed. So, so I was quite, quite, quite happy about that at that time. At that time. But uh, yeah, then COVID-19 pandemic struck us. And everything was kind of tricky, you know, the market was tricky, the The clients were a bit down because, you know, no one really wanted to spend out a lot of money, no one knows what's going to happen. So I thought this is really an era of opportunities and I started looking around what kind of problems everyone's currently facing. And um, there was a shortage of face masks that I identified and I had an idea of uh, 3D printed medical face masks. At first, I offered uh, this to create this concept to create with one company that printed uh, 3D printed casts. But eventually, I saw that there was a hackathon actually happening uh, in Latvia and I think also from Estonia and uh, uh, for COVID-19 to tackle different kind of uh, 3D printed masks in the Slack channel. After 24 hours, there had formed a team to this idea that I suddenly had, you know, in, in, in my bedroom that I had read about it. And in three days, we um, contacted uh, the main epidemiologists, hospitals, doctors, other specialists to kind of iterate together with them, to talk to them. We created a prototype. We had a guy who was um, who was able to actually do that in the team. We did a lot of testing, iterating, developing this business concept, and ultimately, we did win the hackathon with the idea. And of course, uh, I didn't have any medical expertise, right? I was just, you know, an idea. And nor was I a designer of the digital mockup or, or the product. And I'm also not someone who can do 3D modeling. But what I could contribute to the business cons, it was the business concept part of it, the business model, uh, partners and clients. Uh, I was reaching out, you know, to the hospitals and everyone and uh, pitching and just, you know, coordinate, coordinating the teamwork while we were uh, working on the three days when we were there. Product was highly demanded, right? And even even too demanded for us for a team who was very dispersed. Uh, uh, we had team members from uh, Luxembourg, Estonian team member. We were all online doing this, like you guys currently. But we could never sustain really the demand that we had. So we have had to give this idea to a company for realization. 
uh, to a large 3D printing company who took it over as, you know, in the first day we had like 3000 um, orders for the product and we didn't have any facilities. We didn't have staff or anything. So the company um, took it over. We were, you know, a bit helping them to kind of transition transition for them in the first weeks. But basically we, I, as I know, they sold like 20,000 more face shields in that month. And I remember receiving like calls from NATO because I was like the or original contact at first and they, they were really interested. So um, this was something that was a really, really cool experience for myself, uh, for every team member. And um, it was just, you know, like a confirmation of, hey, when you kind of look for problems and you kind of look for solutions, it could be good ideas, you know, that you can develop. But this, this was a really, really great experience that I wanted to kind of share and to encourage if you like see these programs, hackathons, anything, it's, it's really a great opportunity to to participate because you never know. Uh, it, it could be a business that can come, come out of it. And like in this case, it really was a business for them. But uh, not long after this experience, and because of also legally that I had in background, I partnered up with an Estonian startup who tried to build a similar product as we did with legally. Uh, the, the first one that we didn't launch. So they had product, but they actually had launched it. So uh, we partnered up and uh, they had this product already built and they were looking to expand. So I said, why not? You know, I, I have already had a bit of experience in bringing a product to the customer. So let's bring it to Latvia, I said to them. And here came my first experience with uh, real public speaking, real product development, real business development and market research. And this was the real, real first startup experience that I had. And um, they took me in as a country manager for Latvia because I already had, you know, had some clients, had some base in Latvia. So it was easier for me to help them to come here. And also a global expansion manager, I was there as I was helping eventually then uh, them to who go to come up with their next product version and to understand also who might be their client outside of even Latvia and Europe as well. I was there for two and a half years and we participated in different programs. We traveled a lot. It was an exciting time, of course. Uh, Estonia was my second home. At first, when I joined them, they had an Excel sheet for which they tried to automate a few call to lawyers and a few document automations. But together, we built this engine that you can see. Okay, it's not moving here, but you know, in a different presentation, it did move. It was a GIF. But next to the phone, you can see um, it's an engine basically that could automate different tasks. You could, you know, build. Uh, these uh, decision trees and you could build chatbots from them and we could help clients with uh, automating documents, gathering together documents, do different kind of calculations so they don't have to do it manually. Together, we came together and uh, eventually this product that was built, it was meant for state institutions to uh, manage requests uh, from clients, from call centers. We replaced some call centers and also from litigation funds but I will not go into that much much further but you know the product was great and we found our customer but um, what's an interesting story actually is that we had a uh, student related experience also in this company where students really helped us to come to this idea and it's also an initiative where we created Hackathon and also an international internship program uh, where we would teach how to build these products how to work with our engine to find the product, problem to solve. And uh, we help them to launch their products that they have thought of. And actually one of these products, um, and, and we like there was a top student that was really, really into everything and she was so passionate about it. And see like the passion, the passion is what is, what is really the key. Uh, she created a product for Turkish Ministry of Trade and she was the one who created a product that like, um, kind of help the call center to uh, to gather these incoming requests. And this is how we kind of found out that uh, state institutions might be interested really in us. And she was also leading the product until at one point she decided to take a different career path. But this was a really good experience for her. And why we did target students for this program is that, you know, when we were targeting lawyers, they they didn't know how to think of in this tech way. They were already, you know, working in the law field for 10 and 20, uh, 10 and 20 years, and they had a different way of thinking. They couldn't look. So we needed students with fresh minds who were ready to explore. Also, to were the ones who really helped us to accelerate. And, and, and this is a really great experience. And I think a good tip also for you, again, to participate if you see these kinds of opportunities. But yeah, this was a huge experience for me. 
And I also got to talk to a lot of investors. I learned about fundraising. What does that even mean? I got to work with real developers. I got to speak to government officials of like Turkey, Israel, Germany, Poland, Estonia. It, it was a really, really big experience for me in my hand. But, but again, you know, this time we knew who our client was and why they needed us. And after a while, after these a few years that I worked there, I did join an Austrian startup. They asked me to join them. And uh, they had a similar product to Hugo. Uh, and it was very logical that they asked me to help them. And as you can see in the picture, but it was, you know, next level product. They asked me to join the team because they couldn't figure out, again, who is their customer to sell, customer to sell it. They had this product. They had this recognition. But. They didn't have any, you know, clients actual paying. They could automate processes and, but they also had AI, artificial intelligence there. You could, you could also teach uh, different processes to it, like uh, to recognize emotions from text or to scan handwritten documents and translate into written text, etc. And they didn't know what to do with it. They had built a product that they didn't know how to apply and where. So I came in to help and uh, we together, uh, you know, this definitely wasn't the first rodeo. So we started again, we started with research and long story short, I found a pain point to them. I found a problem and we together found a customer that had this problem. We found retailers that needed customer emails, uh, reviews and incoming requests automated. So, you know, you can see these companies like Ikea, Cartier, Volvo. Those are the ones that actually were helping us to develop the product for our clients. But imagine Ikea, right? You, you're, I don't know, someone orders a table online and you have ordered it and your parcel doesn't come. You write a bad review. Ikea is bad. They didn't send me my table. And what we did, you know, they cannot manage these thousands and hundreds of thousands requests manually. So what we did with AI we made it so that if there's a review or if there's a message, the AI could recognize, is it a bad message? Is it a good message? And then it would sort it and uh, do the action accordingly. For example, if there's a parcel missing, it would automatically send out or refund the client. And then, of course, the, cl the client satisfaction would grow. The companies were happy. Everyone was great. And so, yeah, we found a client. And and uh, I did uh, my time for a few, few months there. I was like kind of more providing there my service rather than, you know, working for them. But it was a really, really fun time, I think, also as well. So, um, but what now? You know, what I'm, uh, what I'm doing now, because we're also a bit of, out of a time, uh, but... Um, my time at Deep Vinyan Yao was quite short, but currently me and uh, nine other hackers Riga, I haven't yet talked about it, but uh, it is a non-governmental organization that I created when I created also legally. It was in 2019 uh, to help grow legal tech in Latvia. Uh, we are actually renaming it to Legal Tech Innovation Hub this year, where, uh, but we're trying to bring, bring together like government institutions, legal professionals, tech professionals, anyone interested, also students, uh, business people to bring this innovation to the industry and like fight bureaucracy, really. That's kind of our goal. And in the photos, you can see events from this year. Uh, we are quite active with panels, workshops, lectures, um, and, and we have had many supporters who have helped us as well. And uh, this is one thing that I'm definitely doing currently. I've also joined Riga Tech Girls actually as a co-creator and currently I'm helping uh, to lead free exploration program and mentorship program. So I'm spending quite a, a lot of time to helping uh, others create their products, growing, uh, helping other startups to kickstart their ideas. And lastly, after this hectic experience, they're actually trying to build a new product as well. So I'm not off the track of trying to build a tech product, but um after this experience, it's a bit different this time. We actually are building a product that we see and we have experience that is that is needed. So we hope this time we'll get it. But um, it is going to be a software access management platform to track software usage, spend, automate access for, uh, for contractors to different kinds of tools that you have in your company. But this time again, yeah, we started from this problem that we saw where, you know, employees leave a company and, and, and the company is still paying for different kind of Zoom licenses and Slack licenses, and they cannot track with 2,000 employees who is using what, and we're trying to kind of help with that uh, for companies so they don't overspend. And uh, yeah, in the future, we don't know what it, what it holds, but uh, with that, I wanted to say that, you know, it's okay if after your first try, you're not already succeeding in being a millionaire because uh, or something doesn't go as planned, you learn from it, right? And you get up and back, uh, you get up and try again. And 
the most important thing is really to remain curious, curious about your customer, what they are, what they need to develop something that they need. So they would have the incentive to actually buy your product. Curious about new knowledge, curious of the unknown. And uh, I would like to end with this one uh, really, really great, I think, quote uh, that I heard in one of the pitch trainings in Riga Tech Girls last week that we had in the program. We had a pitch coach who said, you know, what we all have in common is that we were all babies who didn't know how to walk. And um, at one point we started to learn how to walk, but you know what all of us also had in common? We also probably fell. We also probably bumped our heads. And um, so it's it's for everything in life and also in entrepreneurship, also in product development. It's okay to fail. It's okay to try and not succeed in the first time, but that's the journey. You have to love it. You have to you know learn from it. Everything will be fine in the end. So. Uh, Thank you for listening. You can definitely reach out if you're interested to, uh, to talk more uh, or if you have any ideas, you know, that you want to talk about. I can I can definitely help you to think about ways, you know, what to do and what, what could be the next steps. And I have it also on my Instagram because I understand some of you might not be on LinkedIn. I don't post a lot there, but sometimes I do post something on Instagram as well. So feel free to contact me if you're interested. And thank you and good luck to the to you guys in this program.